Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to this Diagnostic World video here. Um, in this video we are hoping to uh, talk you through a comprehensive uh, review, demonstration and a guide on how to use the iCOS of CR Pro Kit. Uh, it's available at Diagnostic World, it's www.diagnostic-world.com and I'm going to put the link to this kit in the description below this video. Uh, so we are in a Toyota Yaris here, we're using this as a demonstration car today and we've um, We've set up a few faults here, so we've got the ABS warning light, we've got the airbag warning light and the check engine warning light on the, um, the dashboard there. Now as I said, these faults have all been arranged by ourselves, uh, we've got the know-how on what to do to, to, to trigger these faults um, and then we'll, we're going to basically run through the tool and show you how to use the tool, how to diagnose the faults and how to get rid of the warning lights and the fault codes which are stored in the, uh, the vehicle's ECU or the computer. Um, so the tool is plugged into the diagnostic port. The diagnostic port is generally underneath the steering wheel but before you get to the pedals. And this is the home screen. This is the screen you'll be greeted with once the tool is plugged in. It doesn't need any batteries. The tool takes its power from the battery of the vehicle. Um, so one thing first of all is obviously you've got like a, a toggle button here where you can go through and select whatever you need to select. What I would normally do first of all is go straight to setup. You don't have to do this if you don't want to uh, but for me personally I like to go to buzzer and just get rid of that buzzer. It makes the whole experience a lot better. So now we're back onto the home screen and we can click into diagnostics. And obviously we've got a huge range of vehicles and I'm just gonna scroll through them now just so you've got a good idea of what to expect. So we've got BMW, Mini, Land Rover, Jaguar, Mercedes, Smart, Sprinter, VW, Audi, Skoda, Seat, Porsche, Volvo, Saab, Opel, which is Vauxhall, Fiat, Alfa Romeo, Peugeot, Citroen, Renault, Dacia, General Motors, GM, Jeep or Chrysler, Ford, Holden, Toyota, Lexus, Sion, Nissan, Infiniti, Acura, Honda, Mitsubishi, Mazda, Kia, Hyundai, and Deu. So, we're going to go back to Toyota, which is our vehicle. And so we're going to go through the options of diagnosing. First of all, I think we'll do the check engine light. So you need to select your area. Well, we're not in Japan, we're not in North America, so we're going to click other area. And we're going to click on manual. This gives you the option to diagnose whatever system you wish to diagnose. So engine and ECT is what we need to select in order to try and diagnose this little check engine light here. So we're going to click on to enter. Click read fault code and it's giving us a fault code of P0351. Now that fault code was triggered because we simply unclicked the electrical connection in the uh, ignition coil for circuit, uh, sorry, ignition coil A which is uh, bank number one or cylinder number one should I say. So we'll come out of that and we're going to click on clear fault memory and when I do this just keep one eye on the check engine light once I click enter here. There we go. Check engine light is gone, as simple as that. Now obviously I've made that look very easy there, however, if you were to get that fault in real life, for example, you would probably need to go ahead and change either, either the ignition coil or the spark plug. One of those would have fouled up, which is causing a misfire on cylinder one or cylinder A. So that's the, uh, the theory behind how it all works. You need to find what the code is, fix the fault. Once the fault code is, once the fault is fixed, then of course you can uh, erase the codes and erase, erase the warning lights. So uh, we'll come out of this now and we'll go into the SRS airbag. And we're gonna do the exact same procedure here. We're gonna click on to read fault code. So that's the fault code we triggered. We unclipped the connection underneath the driver's seat put it back together and we can click on clear fault memory and once I click OK here we're looking to get rid of the red airbag light. There we go, gone in a flash. So that's gone and then we've got one more which is the ABS light. So we read fault code, we unclip the rear right ABS sensor, we've put it back in but the ABS light is still on. Now this works in a slightly different way and I suppose every vehicle works in a slightly different way when we're looking at the ABS because in this vehicle we can 
go ahead and we can erase the trouble codes but the ABS light will stay on. In other vehicles it may go off straight away so it all really depends on the setup of the vehicle and how that diagnostic system is programmed to work. So in this vehicle we've erased the codes but obviously as I say the light is still on. What this car requires is an engine off and then an engine restart. All of the lights will temporarily come back on and then they should all go off again. There we go, all of the lights are off. Obviously, this is just the brake, uh, sorry, the handbrake warning light, so uh, just ignore that for now. But that's, in theory, how it works. Now, you can get uh, live data, lots and lots of live data from your engine. Just go to uh, View Data. And we'll click on to F1 to select all. Oh, in fact, no, what I won't, what I'll do is... Um, How would we, yeah, so we'll select the ones we want. So you can just, you can obviously look at all of the, all of the live data if you want, every single bit of live data, or you can just choose to look at specific bits of live data. So I'm choosing a few here, then I'm gonna click F2. So these are the live data options that I've selected. So I wanted to see the coolant temperature, the engine speed, the MAF reading, and the throttle position sensor. Now, if I put my foot on the throttle and just give it a bit of gas, you'll see this move. And obviously, we know that the sensor is working correctly because we've got 0% when we have our foot completely off the pedal. Uh, but that's just basically an idea of what you can expect from the live data. But there's a lot more different options. I mean, I'll scroll through them here. 144 in this vehicle, in fact. The amount of uh, live data options you will get depends on the actual vehicle. But there's, there's tons there. There's a lot for me to get through, so I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, we'll go back to the home menu. What, sorry, what else? What obviously you can do as well, I forgot to say, is that live data, you can record that live data. So once when you're out driving, if you suspect one of your sensors might be faulty and you want to get a reading of what, it, what it's like while you're actually driving, uh, you can record the data, then go back and review it by clicking the review button. Now we haven't recorded any data on this tool, but this is where you would come if you had recorded some live data and you could come and watch it back. And it would give you all of the vehicle details like the speed, the temperatures for when um, when faults were occurring. So it's uh, it's very handy to have. Um, so what I'll do is we'll go to this part of the menu now. And this basically is more service options. So you can do oil service resets, all your brake resets and things like that. Your uh, electronic parking brake, uh, battery registration. So if you've got a new battery in, um, if, you, if your car's got one of these AGM batteries and it's a, a stop start vehicle, then a lot of them these days you, you are required to program or register the battery to the car. Uh, well, you do that via this option here. Uh, electronic throttle control, steering angle sensor, and diesel particulate filter. So if you need to do a forced regeneration on a diesel vehicle, then that's what you would need to uh, select. Now, one thing I need to say about this is it doesn't, it's not an exact science on every single car. Um, you, your car might have a, a DPF uh, system fitted in your car, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this kit will automatically work. It might work for things like uh, diagnosing engine lights or airbag lights, but it might not, the software might not be developed enough to do the DPF regeneration on your car. So um, what I would do is, just if you are thinking about buying this tool for any of these functions here, maybe just have a quick word with us, send us an email at Diagnostic World, go onto the website, send us an email and we'll have a look at our data sheets to make sure that this tool is going to be suitable for your needs and your vehicle. Um, it's, it's better to do it before you actually make any purchase rather than um, be receiving the tool and being disappointed and have to wait for the engineers to develop a software update which can sometimes take months. Uh, so that's that. Uh, voltage, just a basic option here, gives you the minimum and the maximums of the, um, the, the the battery at any one time. Obviously, these values are fluctuating ridiculously quick for me to uh, to tell you about, but uh, you get the idea from that menu there. And then pretty much everything else. Um, 
that's a, just a basic OBD2 option, so it's a quick route into diagnosing an engine fault. Uh, you can go in the diagnostics menu, but if you wanted a quick way, instead of choosing your vehicle and things like that, then you can just go into that option there and I'll diagnose it for you. Uh, DTC lookup, so it's got DTC library built in. It's generally generic fault codes and that. Uh, setup of the vehicle, uh, sorry, setup of the tool. I told you about this before. Um, we'll go back and we we'll go to help. It just gives you a bit of information about OBD, OBD, what is OBD, what modes there are. And the last one I think was about, which was, it gives you information about this specific tool. So what software it's running, what the serial number is, um, UID number, which you may need for updating. So it tells you what software each specific vehicle or manufacturer is running. Uh, that's how that's a good idea to check that from time to time to make sure that your tool is uh, up to date. So you do get free software updates via the official website. Um, it's a fantastic tool. It's very, very worth having in your toolbox. So if you're working on a few different vehicles uh, or you, you do change vehicles quite often, then this is a fantastic kit to go for. Um, and we highly recommend it here at Diagnostic World. So again, I'll put it, uh, I'll put the link to this kit in the description and in the comments box below this video. And uh, or you can just go onto the website itself, www.diagnostic-world.com. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been uh, comprehensive and um, it's kind of a full review just to give you a, you know, a basic and a, so maybe, well, maybe a little bit of a more advanced understanding of how the tool actually works. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.